let's take a quantum leap into some questions that are just for A-level people out there. 1. What is the energy of a photon equal to? E equals HF, Planck's constant times frequency. 2. How can an electron be raised to a higher energy level? There are two ways. It can either absorb a photon of energy exactly matching the difference in energy levels, or it can absorb some energy from a free electron that collides with it. 3. What happens when an electron de-excites? It emits a photon of energy equal to the drop in energy. 4. How many different wavelengths of EM could this electron emit as it de-excites? It's 6. 5. What is this? How is it obtained? And what can it help you identify? It's an absorption spectrum. It's made by shining all wavelengths of light through a gas and detecting what wavelengths are and aren't transmitted. This allows you to identify the types of atoms or molecules in the gas. 6. In a fluorescent tube, how are free electrons produced to begin with? A current is passed through the cathode, metal filament, and it heats up. The electrons gain enough energy to be liberated from the metal, we call this thermionic emission, and are accelerated due to the PD that has been set up across the tube. 7. How is a visible light emitted by a fluorescent tube? First, the free electrons collide with the electrons in the gas, that's low pressure mercury usually, raising them to a higher energy level. When these de-excite, they emit UV photons that are absorbed by the electrons in the fluorescent coating. Visible light photons are emitted when these de-excite. 8. What is the photoelectric effect? When a photon of sufficient energy is absorbed by an electron on a metal surface, liberating it from the metal. 9. What does it prove and how? Proves the particle nature of light due to one-to-one -one interactions between photons and electrons. 10. What kind of energy do electrons have once they're liberated? Kinetic energy. 11. What is the work function of a metal? Phi. Work function is the minimum energy required to liberate an electron from the surface of the metal. 12. What is the equation for the photoelectric effect? Ek max equals hf minus phi. 13. What is the y axis? It's Ek max. 14. What is the y intercept? It's the work function phi, or rather minus phi. 14. What is this, the x-intercept, and how does it relate to the work function? It's the threshold frequency, F0. It's the minimum frequency needed to liberate electrons. 15. What is the gradient equal to? It's Planck's constant. 16. In this circuit here, what is stopping potential Vs, and how does it link to the kinetic energy of the electrons? Stopping potential is the minimum PD needed to reduce the current in the circuit to zero. That's when we know we've stopped the electrons crossing the gap. 17. What changes and what stays the same if you increase the intensity of light incident on the plate? This only increases the photons per second incident on the plate, doesn't change the frequency. So that means that the number of electrons emitted per second increases, but the EK max is unchanged. 18. If electrons are fired at a layer of graphite, what is observed on a phosphorescent screen behind? We see circular fringes. This shows that electrons are diffracting around the atoms. This proves the wave nature of electrons. 19. What is the equation for the de Broglie or de Broglie wavelength? That's a matter wavelength of a particle. Lambda equals h over p. That's Planck's constant over momentum. Or lambda equals h over mv. 20. How do you obtain the equation that links together momentum and kinetic energy? Fairly tricky, people forget this one, but it's quite handy. We start off with E equals half mv squared times the whole thing by m. We end up with me equals half p squared. Rearranging, we get p equals the square root of 2me. Hope you find this helpful. If you did, please leave a like. If you haven't seen my particles flashcard questions, they link quite nicely together, so have a look at those. See you there.